Asking how you're doing is like more of a courtesy. Oh, right. Hey, do you think you'll ever want to have a kid? It's just like such a heavy question right before bed. You really don't know how good you have it. Do you know what having sex is like right now? Sadly, not really. All right. Me. I see you across the street. Shaking. Listen, um, I'm gonna get some air. Hi, is Elijah here? He's about this tall, dressed as kind of like if Kurt Cobain was a lesbian. Mom! Mama. Gina, I slept with this super hot man. Had just met him, woke up the next day, married to him. Don't forget, we have our thinning for the Met Bowl today. The theme is it's trash. Oh, that's cool. I'm being transported to other dimensions every time I orgasm. <laughs> Damn, that's goals. It's like you were born to be a mom. How do you do it? You just love it? I've been lost, trying to find my way back to my old self. Oh, sorry, do I know you? No, I, I don't think so. Maybe you just got one of those faces. There are infinite worlds. <laughs> I can't seem to feel at home in any of them. Something about leaving one world in it allows you to re-enter the old one from a new place. I'm my cannon and this is not my life! Do you come here a lot? Uh, no, I've, I've actually never been here before. Meg, bitch, where have you been all my life? <laughs> oh, hi there. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. We did this a while ago. Uh, yeah. It was an environment. Um, it's so far back and I forgot. Oh, to... consumed. You consumed, which I, yeah, I interestingly, that. I remember it as a documentary, but it's. Yeah, no, I mean, it was definitely based in, in real world. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's just, yeah. But this, this is really, uh, uh, I was so, it was so entertaining, Zoe. Thank uh, you. So but, yeah. And you, uh, you had something to do with the with the actual uh, idea here, with the actual. <laughs> no, you directed. There's seven seven episodes. Yeah. And you directed them. You wrote them. You act star in them. Mm -hmm. um, you're the showrunner. Mm -hmm. Were you overwhelmed at any point? Was this did this all just your enthusiasm for the project? Uh, over sort of uh, kind of take care of all that or did you still find yourself freaking out I mean that's a lot of responsibility it, it seems so it is a lot of responsibility um you know I, I mean listen it's definitely overwhelming and it presents many many challenges uh as an artist but um I love it I think probably because I, I yeah there's a factor of the of it being so much my my creation sure. um that 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 the love for the project sort of um Gave overshadows you overshadows Gave any you superpowers yeah it does yeah it's um i'm i don't have children but it's what i imagine you know the superpowers that a, a mother you know uh experiences in the face of such insane challenges that there's a love that that drives um that drives the process that's that's pretty um magical well we'll show the trail i'll show the trailer or play the trailer leading into this but um i kind of, i'd like you to if you if you are willing to, to uh, just sort of just talk about the germination of the idea like where and your process for kind of making all things 
what could logically work, you know? I imagine it was very complicated. Uh, and, you know, people will see this is about a woman who is um, uh, maybe at a point in her life where she feels maybe, you know, like anybody, they may get in a rut. Maybe they realize there's no more surprises. You know, maybe they were thinking there might be more. <laughs> you know, it's sort of a midlife, early, very, very, very early midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, totally. Third quarter life crisis, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, ends up having an uh, out of worldly, literally kind of experience, right? She slips from one world to another or one circumstance to another one reality to another. Uh, and just maybe you could just talk a little bit about it. How you figure that out, where that inspiration came from for this idea of the story. Yeah, I think um, I was interested in exploring what we do with, with our desires, you know, and our desires for more in life. Mm -hmm. um, and the concept of you know, the grass sort of always being greener than the one that we're standing on. Um, sure. And I thought it'd be so exciting and, and fun um, and funny to, to see what would happen if you got to actually um, jump to the other side of the grass and see what it, what it actually felt like to, to live those fantasies out and to play them, play them out to their sort of <laughs> um, bleakest, <laughs> um, bleakest and, ends, or, uh, or conclusion or what have you right yeah, yeah uh and and i wanted to create something that you know was also sexy and and escapist and and that was exploring i think women's sexuality in particular at a later stage in life um which i didn't feel like we had really seen um done before and and so yeah all those all those ideas culminated um and we're, we're percolating in me for a, a few years. And then when quarantine hit, I, uh, I wrote the season um, in lockdown. Cause I think at that time, all those questions became, you know, even more present for so many of us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, you know, it's true. I can't even, thank goodness. I can't give away stuff because I can't even, there, I feel like as a guy at, right now, 2023 Zoe, that I can't even talk about, certain aspects of it. it's very, very, uh, um, you're very uh, uh, forthright sex with your sexuality in this film, uh, or series rather, excuse me. And um, the key to the portal from one reality to another is very, very uh, specific, let's put it that way. So for, I'm, yeah. I'm, I can't even talk about it. Yeah, um, well, it's orgasm, you know, that's you the, I, I was the portal. <laughs> Uh, which yeah. makes on some level perfect sense of course you know although yeah. they've also been called little deaths you know in the past you know yes and and I think you know Buddhism is a through line throughout the series too and right. there's, there's a sense of sort of reincarnation too with, with each orgasm being a little death or or just transporting in nature you know I, I think we don't get to see women explore sexuality in a way that feels that raw and unapologetic all that often. Um, I think especially in the history of cinema, uh, there have been a lot of roadblocks, I, you know, around um, what we're able to see, like um, in, in terms of women on screen. And, and I did want to support um, what that looked like, you know, uh, and, and a woman sort of being in control of her own sex and sexuality and sexual desires. Yeah, I would say that's what you're describing is specific, kind of specific, especially to the United States and the mm -hmm. cinema, history of cinema here, especially, um, you know, and perhaps this is like, and I don't think the solution to it is just not to make films that explore that uh, it's or series in this case, but to or make um, art that explores it. Uh, it's to actually put it out there and take those risks and just hope that we as a culture can kind of look at these things as part of just human nature as they absolutely are and um you know and and uh, be okay with it be comfortable with it you know and not yeah. objectify yeah. women in the process because that's kind of what we do in most of this historically and in, in in the films that it, we make here 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I think looking at, at the ways that, that those portrayals have impacted culture, you know, it's, it's pretty profound yeah. um, in terms of, of the objectification of women and, and, um, and in some ways that objectification is also, like you said, part and parcel with um, a suppression, right, of female sexuality. It's like, you can only be an object, but if, if you're really gonna explore female orgasm, which we so rarely see, you know, um, that that's somehow a threat. <laughs> and so I wanted to make it less threatening and make it sexy, but also, you know, I think push people to, to view um, women's sexuality through a different lens. Uh, this is the, we're talking about the series Slip, which is going to be on the Roku platform. They produced this series, correct? Yeah, yeah. Roku is now, um, they are, are now a streaming platform and, and they're creating their own original content. And they've been such an incredible partner to me. They, they really... Um, they greenlit the whole show to series without one script note. Uh, they just let me really have so much creative freedom, which I'm so grateful for. And, and um, it's such a rarity in the TV space. And, um, and yeah, they've been an amazing partner. And, and I know, you know, people are like, well, how do I watch Roku? But it's, it's really not that, <laughs> not that difficult. You can just go to the Roku channel.com on oh. your laptop or iPad. But, um, okay. In other words, the Roku is, uh, let's say, a competitor of uh, uh, Apple TV, even though I think it was around before Apple TV. Uh, and so now they're creating content, but that you can actually stream Slip just by going to their website. Yeah, I mean, if you have a Roku, obviously you can watch it on your TV. If you have a okay. Samsung, you can download the Roku app. If you have an Amazon Fire Stick, you can download the Roku app. But um, but well, yeah. You really, know, you really learned a lot about that. I have to. I know, I know, of course. Sell this thing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we're we're both we're both going to try to do this. So yeah. entertaining. You look like I mean, you look great, and um, um, it it must be very very exciting to have such an opportunity to uh, to be able to really figure out this character whose name is May. Uh, what was Cannon? May Cannon, yeah. Yeah, what a lovely person she is. <laughs> Thank you. Coincidentally. And I was going to see if Roku had other original series, but because I'm I'm ignorant. But I uh, and and if or if yours might be one of the first, if not the first series, I don't know. So it's one of the first, one yeah. Of the first. And and oh, I think that's why like educating people on how to watch is so important, you know, because Roku's I, making really really cool we'll, stuff. And we, if I'm allowed to use this video, which I think I asked, but if I yeah. can, I can edit this into something and then we can put the links and everything and make sure people yeah, do know it because I do want people to see your series and uh, um, and you have a, such a great cast on this in the uh, uh, series as well. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think being an early creative uh, as part of the Roku uh, platform, you, I think you're, yeah, you probably are an advant advantageous moment because you can probably do as much do as much as you can now. Will there be a season two? Do you know that? Is it too soon to ask about such a thing? Um, we haven't been greenlit to. to All um, right, I'm, here, oh. but we have been we have been greenlit to write season two, and and um, so we do have all of season two written. So uh, fingers Ooh. crossed that we get to okay. shoot it. That's good. All right, that's great. It is premiering though on uh, Roku, the R Roku streaming service or the app as of, uh, I wrote it down here, so I do know uh, somewhere on here. April 21st. Yes, that's correct. I was just testing you. You, you seem to know it all, uh, that's very good. And, they saw, and you premiered at South by Southwest. Yeah. That, that's, a, uh, how'd that go? Oh, it was amazing. You know, yeah. it, it was yeah. really exciting to share it with the world. Janet Pearson, is this her first time, first festival without Janet Pearson? Is it like in the- yes. yeah. 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 And I love Janet. Uh, I know, me too. Um, but yeah, it was a great festival and, and it was, it's a festival that really helped launch my career at the beginning of it. So it was really cool to return to it. And, um, so congratulations, the name of the series again, Slip, written, directed, and starring Zoe Lister-Jones, and it's premiering on the 21st of April. I recommend it highly. And also, you're in the Bo is Afraid. Yes. 
you knew that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just that experience, and it's getting a lot of attention, of course. Uh, it was amazing. I mean, Ari Aster, I think, is, is oh, really God. one of what the great lucky. characters. You're, you're really hitting your stride now, again. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Well, I, w I, get, I wish you all the luck, and I uh, thank you for making time today. And uh, we'll get the word out. Cool. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.